opens with Waldo's faithful and beloved medicine show truck spinning along over the open road. Nothing like the call of the open road, eh, Hopper dear? Yeah, but the open road has a few holes in it today. Watch out for that bump, Uncle Waldo. Hey, what bump? That bump. Hey, what's that noise? Sounds like that last bump did something to our motor. Well, I'd better pull over and have a look. The noise isn't coming from the motor, it's coming from inside the truck. And opening up the back of the truck, they found... Fillmore! So it's you, Noodlehead. The name is Fillmore. <laughs> Athlete, bugle blower, and now author. Author? I just wrote a book. Yeah, you want me to read it to you? Would it do any good to say no? Uh, no. Read us the book. <clears throat> a story by Fillmore. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was three friends. A little one, a bigger one, and a great big dumb one. So far, it sounds familiar. And one day, they met a man who fell out of an airplane. Ah! Out of mischief, where did you come from? I just fell out of an airplane. Just like in Fillmore's book. The man offered to give them a diamond ring. You fellas want a diamond ring? For free. For free. Now, hold on. Why do you want to give us a diamond ring? Because this happens to be the hopeless diamond, and it brings bad luck to whoever has it. Fiddle faddle. How can a ring bring you bad luck? Falling out of an airplane isn't exactly good luck, you know. Well, I still don't believe in such things. Then you'll take it. Certainly. Hooray! I'm free! I'm free! Uh, he must be a real screwball to give away a ring such as this. Why, it must be worth a fortune. Either that or the ring really is bad luck. It, my book says it was a dark day for the friends because the ring was cursed with bad luck. Balderdash, what does your book know about it? It's been right so far, Uncle Waldo. So what? We've got the ring and nothing has happened yet. A short distance away, two lumberjacks are cutting down a tall tree and... Him! What happened? Uh, you had a little bad luck there, Waldo. Uh, a tree fell on you. That settles it. We better get rid of this ring. We'll get rid of it by going to town and selling it. Walk this way. Ignoring the bad luck, they returned to Waldo's truck and headed for town. But before they had gone very far... Uh, we're not going to make it. Who says so? It's right here on page 34 of my book. I shouldn't ask, but what does it say? It, it wasn't long before bad luck struck the three friends again. They were going around a steep curve. Watch out for this curve, Uncle Waldo. I've got it. it when they had a flat tire. The truck skidded out of control, zoomed off a high cliff, and crashed into a tree. Do you believe the ring is bad luck now, Uncle Waldo? No, now let's get out of here and we'll walk to town. I don't believe this. I simply do not believe it. I mean, after all. Leaving the truck and carefully climbing down the tree, Hoppity and Fillmore hurried to Waldo's side. Uncle Waldo, are you hurt? No, of course not. I've been falling 200 feet and landing on your head hurts you. That proves the ring is bad luck. It does nothing of the sort. Here, you can carry the ring for a while, Hoppity. Just for the record, what does your book say happens next, Fillmore? Uh, chapter 5. The ring strikes again. The three friends fall off the highest bridge in the county. It all started... Oh, no. We're on a bridge now. Don't move. It feels like it's going to give way any second. I give up. Let's get rid of the ring. Where is it, Hopper? I gave it to Fillmore. And I got it right here with my finger. Stuck. With the ring stuck tight on Fillmore's finger, there was no way to escape the bad luck, and... <laughs> Be sure to watch next time for Darn the Luck or Summer, Spring, and Fall! In our last episode, Fillmore got the hopeless diamond ring stuck on his finger, and the bad luck stuck right along with it. The bridge they were standing on collapsed, and... Get that ring off, Fillmore. Maybe it'll change our luck in time. Hey, you're kidding, of course. 
Doctor. Fifty million four-leaf clovers couldn't help us now. Rocks, here we come. There aren't any rocks down there. There's a nice wide river. What luck? The water will break our fall. But their luck was still running bad. They missed the water. Hit a sandbar. Well, this is the first time in a hundred episodes we didn't get saved from a cliffhanger. Uh, it's the first time in a hundred episodes we've had the hopeless diamond ring going for us. How are we going to get to shore? What does your book say, Fillmore? It hasn't been wrong yet. Uh, but they were soon picked up by a boat. Uh, that sounds like good luck for a change. I don't believe it. I don't either. However, there was a boat coming downriver. A boat owned and operated by two unscrupulous river pirates. Uh, here comes the boat, right on cue. Delighted that they at last had somebody to rob, the river pirates wasted no time in picking up our hero. Now you might just make yourselves to home while we plan our first move. And so our innocent heroes lounged around the boat while the two rogues schemed to rob them. Hey, do you suppose the little green guy's got any money? He don't wear no clothes. Where would he keep it? I'll find out. Hey, you got change for a five, Maggie? No. Do you have any money at all? Heck no. Where would I keep it? That's what we figured. Next, the two scoundrels tried Waldo. <laughs> hey, give us a your coat, mon ami. We will press it for you. Oh, how nice. See if you can fluff up the shoulders a bit. Hmm. Hmm. There's a nothing in his uh, pockets but cookie crumbs. Let's try his pants pockets. Nothing but more cookie crumbs. <laughs> then they turned to Fillmore. And when they saw the diamond ring on his finger... Hey, is that a real diamond ring? Uh, you bet your hockey puck it is. Oh, well, <laughs> in that case, this is a stick-up. We want that diamond ring. Wonderful. We'd love to give it to you. But we can't. It's stuck here on my finger. Oh, that's no problem. We can get it off, can't we, Pierre? Sure. Hey, hey cut it out. I mean, uh, don't cut it out. They were in a tight spot, and Hoppity had to act fast. Grabbing the wheel, he crashed the boat into the shore. Good work, Hoppity. That'll hold them. Not too long, it won't. Let's get out of here. Our only chance is to get the ring off Fillmore's finger and let him have it. Capital thought, but how? Maybe Fillmore's book can tell us. Read, Fillmore, read. Dead. The three terrified friends ran to the cabin. The book is still on the beam. There is a cabin. They hurried inside, and Fillmore continued. And they steamed their big friend until his fingers got skinny and the ring fell off. Steam him? Did I write that? That's it. We'll make Fillmore lose weight. And quickly rigging up a steam cabinet, they proceeded to reduce Fillmore. Are you skinny yet, Fillmore? Uh, no, but it, they won't be long now. They must be 190 in a shade in here. But at that moment, their time ran out. The river pirates crashed through the door. Now we're going to take the ring the hard way. Wait, I think Fillmore's done. We did it. Here, take the ring. Please, take the ring. Hey, I ain't never seen anybody so anxious to be robbed before. Taking the ring, the two pirates ran to an old car outside and made a speeding getaway down the mountain. Now they can have the bad luck, which will be happening about now. See what I mean? And it all happened. Just like in my book. What does your book say happens now, Fillmore? It, it says just one more thing. Be sure to watch for the next adventure of Hoppity Hooper. The end.